Okay, so when you get through medical school and you decide to become an eye surgeon, it's another at least sort of nine years with about 12 exams to go. While at the same time as you're still working as a resident and an intern in the hospital on call and uh, it's quite hard work as to fit in the study. So the iPhone was very useful to help me sort of fit in those extra five minutes around the spot, around you know, when you're sitting at traffic lights, when you're waiting for the elevator, all these spare minutes are really useful. So the first application that I used was called Flashcards and it, it's a great little program that lets you load questions and answers into this sort of flashcard program. So you can, as you're sitting at the traffic lights, you can see the question, try to test yourself and then you can actually flip over with the iPhone, it'll come up with the answer on the other side. And for our exam, we had um, 80 very short answer questions of which there was a bank of about 900 questions. So I was able to load these 900 questions and test myself at every opportunity. The next thing my friends and I did was we created an online wiki which uh, we used for all of our study notes. So we had past exam questions and we were able to load up uh, pre-written answers as well as all the information that we required. Now at the hospitals they, they've decided in their infinite wisdom that we're not allowed access to Google, Gmail, anything like that in case we spend all of our time emailing our friends rather than seeing patients because that's what we do. Um, so that's all barred. So to have the wiki available on my iPhone was really useful. So in between patients or in my lunch break, I was still able to use all my study resources and applications. The other thing is we're expected to keep up to date. So it's no good studying from textbooks when you're doing your final exams. You have to be really current. You have to know what was published last week. So using Twitter, um, so for example here, the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Hospital, and an English ophthalmology web, they are putting constant updates about the latest research with links to articles. So this was also really useful to be able to look that up while I was, uh, had some spare moments or even you know, at home. So you pass the exam, you then have to get to work. So the synced calendar is really useful to know when I'm meant to be at which hospital and when I'm teaching medical students. So the next step, once you've sort of got your exams, is you're then actually starting to see patients. And the first thing, obviously, is you take a history. You want to talk to your patient about what's wrong with their eyes. And being a multicultural society that we are in Australia, we have lots of people who don't speak English as their first language. And so the translation application on the iPhone is really useful. So, for example, here I think I've written, you know, what's wrong with your eyes? And up it's coming in Vietnamese. Um, it does kind of rely on your patients being able to see enough to read that, which can be a problem for me, but sometimes I give it a bit of a crack at, you know, what, how I would actually pronounce that, and I can usually get by. So that's really useful. The next thing, obviously, is uh, helping your patients when they're trying to give you their history. It's amazing how many don't know what drugs they're taking. And so the Skyscape medical um, drugs application is really useful because I can check up interactions, can check the drugs, but the best thing is I can actually show the patient's photos. So they'll come in and say, I'm taking eye drops, they're in a little white bottle. Well, they all come in a little white bottle. But for example, this one here has got a red lid. So I can show them the photo and go, is this what it looks like? And that really helps me um, work out what drops and what treatment they're, they're on. So you've taken the history. The next thing to do with your patient is to examine them. And these are some of the applications on the iPhone to actually help you examine your patient. This isn't so relevant in the clinical settings. We have everything there, but when I'm visiting patients on the ward, particularly I'm asked to go and see patients in intensive care quite often because they've had serious head trauma, their vision is decreased. So using this application, I can test their vision by holding the iPhone above their head while they're lying in bed. Um, so the, the first one there is just your regular eye chart, and then the second one is testing color vision. So if someone's had you know, a severe injury and the, the their, uh, the nerve between the eye and the brain is compromised, then often their colour vision is decreased and that's really useful information and it's quite nice to have that. We have books and charts and things obviously available but the lighting is often quite poor in these situations so to have the backlit iPhone to show them these uh, uh, eye charts and colour charts is really useful. So you've, exa you've taken a history, you've examined the patient and you've done a scan of them because you're trying to work out what the hell's going on. So this patient here presented to me with a, a sore red eye and he'd had a car accident 40 years before. 
So we'd scanned his head, and believe it or not, these little white things that he has here, hold on, they're actually bits of glass from his windshield from 40 years before that are now making their way out through the skin of his eye. And uh, so I didn't really know what to do with this, so I took a photo of the scan and sent it to my boss and said, what do you want me to do? So that was a really useful application. <laughs> um, if you're then moving on from there, if your boss doesn't know what's going on, you can actually upload photos onto certain uh, technological sort of medical websites. So this, pa this doctor here, I think he was from Illinois, he's got this lady and he doesn't quite know what to do. So he sent us all an email and he's uploaded a photo of her eye. And so people from all around the world can look at this and can sort of send back messages about what they think's going on and what he should do. So this can be real time, it can be delayed. And finally, once I've seen my patient, examined them, and I know what I'm gonna do with them, then you sort of need to give them information. And in an emergency department setting, which is where I'm currently working, it's very limited time. So I often direct my patients to a blog that I've set up, and I can show them this quickly on the iPhone, and they can then go home with their family and take longer to actually look through the information, particularly about you know, what's gonna happen when we do their cataract operation or things like that. And then finally, at the end of a busy day, my brain's just exhausted and I like some downtime and these are some of the really mindless games that I like to, to play because they don't require much thought but they're kind of addictive. Thank you.